good weekend, all. I wrap scene with your metal market wrap up, your weekend edition. And here we are on Friday, the 10th of March, and I'm worn out. I have been up since two in the morning. So here I am, it's about 6 15 and, uh, at, at night in Chicago. I haven't been to bed, and I admit I'm tired. Uh, the SVB got me up. And then I, I woke up and I just couldn't go back to sleep. So I've been watching everything. And what a day. You saw that the bank has failed. I'm a little surprised the bank that of the size of it failing so fast in terms of they couldn't find a buyer for it. It still can happen. The FDIC could put together, you know how the government is. They can do something like they did with Countryside, make certain guarantees and some behemoth takes over the business. Why not? It's a good business. The problem this bank had and the problem that you saw with Silvergate is when you're a niche bank and that's your focus in the case of SVB, Silicon Valley, that was it. When you look at where they're at, there's very little diversification. Um, you get into a problem because when the industry goes and you stop taking in big receipts and the like and people all of a sudden because of the industry, they need to pull capital or burn through their capital, tech companies, as the companies get going. Well, as they want money back from their deposits, the bank has certain things it sells because it takes your money and it makes money on your money in numerous ways. And there's types of bonds that you hold to duration or securities, and there's types you don't. And I write about it, I explain about it in detail this weekend in my Sunday night report. How'd you like to get it? Move your cursor up here. It'll be right in there. There'll be articles I link to as well from other people. You'll get a full understanding of what this means. All right, could there be contagion from all this? There could be. Do I expect it? Not really, but there could be. Second thing, it's not going to go to the big banks. They do big stress tests, and you know that, and they're very diversified. So if you're with the big boys, the big eight, no, that's not going to happen there. I'd be shocked. I can't even imagine how it could happen. But it could happen to a series of other banks that are just focused like that. What else? Well, this is the week where we now get CPI, PPI, and the European Central Bank monetary decision. I... It, when we got the jobs report this morning, it came out and it showed a 311,000 number, which on its own, a big number, and it had me, it, the headline certainly had me thinking 50 basis points. But then you saw the wobbles within it. You saw that the pay, the labor cost, slipped a little bit. And you saw the unemployment went up from 3.4 to 3.6 because the participation rate picked up by a tenth. But when you're dealing with these many people, the math does that. So now that you get the SVB situation, do you honestly think that in a vacuum the Fed sits there and they don't say to themselves, do you think we're maybe pushing at this point in time too hard? We don't, maybe we should just see that there's no other damage from other banks because we don't exactly know everything that's out there. That's what I think is going to be said at the meeting. So immediately, you slipped back under a 50% probability. Other traders would have thought the same thing. And if you go to the Fed Watch page from the CME group, you see how this all works. It's right there for you. So what happened today is gold got a bid, all right? The yen got a bid, the pound, a number of currencies against the US dollar, because this is not good news for the US dollar. Dollar down, the, especially the gold market to the upside. I don't think this should impact the copper, the silver, the platinum, the palladium, blah, blah. So you can see how that happened, and you ended up 1.6% higher. But it, it helped today to get a rally of $32 an ounce in the gold market just today. What the market did, and I think you can see it right through here, the market had come down. Let's see if I can get this to back off. There you go. This is the week of the 24th. We came down. I every day had been telling you, I think that the market's fighting for its, on a daily chart, for its support at the 1815 to the 1811, 12 area. That was where it was. Here, it came down to 1808.80 on the week of the 24th. It improved last week. And now you got an extension of that to a bit this week. Okay. It's still good. 
Gold gets bearish if you break through that low two weeks ago and close under it. Until that happens, this has been a successful test of those numbers. Now, when we go to a bar chart to see what you've done, you have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, and you had that even without this week. Number two, when you look at the moving averages, where's the battleground? I didn't just make up why I thought these numbers were in the zone, I said. 181040 is your green line. That's the 100-week average. The 18-week average is 1835, and you're under over both of them at this point. Where's the resistance? The upper Bollinger Band, which will fall a bit come the reopening Sunday night. Right now it's at uh, 1944.40. That's pretty high number. You'd have to get up there in order to get up there. You gotta have some panic that's gonna happen. I don't see that at this point. And that's the point I wanna make to you. These things happen, but they don't mean the world is ending. The game now is for the government to contain it, to find a great way out for, the not the bank. They don't wanna rescue SVB. It's to rescue all the money at the bank for the depositors so that they're hold the shareholders of this bank, they're going down the toilet. The bank is going to be gone. I, I think the notes, the bonds, anything the bank was issuing on its own for debt, probably gone. When you look here at higher lows, higher highs, you see it and you see where you're there. And momentum is no longer down. It's at least sideways. So until the market gets back under 1808.80, I think the bulls took control of the market. And I think they'll be buying on the brakes, saying that to themselves. In the gold-silver ratio, silver just can't lift its head. It is a mixture of a fear in our economy what the interest rate hikes are going to do to slow business down. But... China did absolutely nothing so far to rescue its property sector and to do anything that I see in a major stimulus. I just don't see it. I, I've looked and I keep reading at what they're doing. I'm not seeing it, nor is the market. This is why silver's down to the lower Bollinger Band. This should be the zone that finds some support. If you bet that you're staying over a band up or down, you generally don't do very well. In the copper market, it's a pullback to a market that is lacking buying momentum completely. So I can see arguments to fight here at the 395 area. Again, China's a major disappointment. Same in the oil market, a disappointment for it. In the platinum, you already passed tense. We're at the Bollinger Band. So for me, the way I teach charting, I, I would have told you right here, first challenge of the Bollinger Band. Out, you're coming. Bingo. That's what I teach in my enhanced Bollinger Band course. There's no edge there. You walk away from that type of market. I didn't know it would bounce like that. I don't care if it bounces like that. It's still oversold. And for me, in my money, and my the way I teach my clients, whenever you have readings that are under 30, let the next guy want to own it. You know, oversold doesn't beg new money, come join it. Overbought doesn't beg new money. It's when you're not, you've got trends up or trends down that you come in, in my opinion. And in the dollar index, no. This is a sign that the volatility, I know you're going to think I'm absolutely out of my mind, that the volatility is about to come out of the dollar index. Whenever the Bollinger Bands narrow in like that, that's it. For the week, you're up six-tenths of a percent. That's your signal. You step back, and that's not the place I want to be. I want to be in the other currencies when you get those type of events happen. So I'm asking you, hey, you want to see what I'm going to write about this week? Want me to explain to you the banking situation? I'm going to go right into the CPI, the PPI, my thoughts on it, where we're at. How do you get to this? It's simple. You come up here, you give a click. Up, you'll see the icons, free offers, got my research, you'll get a couple of weeks of it free, and you'll have access to the morning updates, both the spider and the morning subscriber video, if you haven't done this recently. We keep records. <laughs> We're not going to keep giving it free to the same people over and over. So if that's it, nah, then you subscribe. I think you'll love this week's report. Uh, I already spent about an hour and a half writing it this afternoon, and I know what it's going to look like for Sunday. So that's what you do. In the morning, we're going to teach price objectives, market setups, what to do in this. We'll discuss this exact events going on. It's now exciting. It doesn't get more exciting than this. So if you don't find this exciting, hey, stop watching. 
the financial markets because this is as exciting as they get. Some people, it's going to be terror because they have money at risk in different ways, but others, opportunity with all this volatility. I'm I. Rapstein. You can go to our website, free offers, or give a click up here. I will see you come uh, Sunday. Well, actually, it'll be Monday morning when you see me here. Take care.